Welcome back to the respiratory chain in biochemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous video, we talked about the reaction and Q cycle of cytochrome C reductase, aka complex 3. Now we're going to talk about complex 4, which is also referred to as cytochrome C oxidase. Okay? So in the previous video, hopefully what we remember is that cytochrome C is ultimately the product of complex 3 in the reduced form. So this enzyme, cytochrome C reductase, its function is to reduce cytochrome C, meaning it gives an electron to cytochrome C. The cytochrome C is soluble in the intermembrane space, so it's going to dissociate and flow over to this enzyme, and you see cytochrome C right here, and it delivers those electrons to cytochrome C oxidase. So initially what we're going to talk about is just the basic path of electrons. So it turns out cytochrome C is going to deliver the electrons. Remember, cytochrome C has a heme, a heme C. Remember, it's the heme C that takes the electron from cytochrome C reductase. And it's also the heme C that gives up the electron to cytochrome C oxidase. So you see the electron coming here. It's initially going to go to a copper uh, cofactor right here, a copper A. That's just the name designation. Then it's going to go to cytochrome A here. And then ultimately to this binuclear center referred to as cytochrome A3 and copper B. The electron is going to specifically go to copper B, and this, comp this binuclear complex right here, because they exist together, is referred to as the oxygen splitting complex. Okay, um, Sort of like in plants, we have the oxygen evolving complex or the water splitting complex. Well, this is the reverse. This is the oxygen splitting complex. Okay, This is where oxygen is going to be split into water. So electrons from copper B are ultimately going to be transferred to molecular oxygen. Now they show this sort of reaction right here where one half of O2 plus two protons goes to water. If we want to, and, and that's because you see two electrons here. Well, if it's half of oxygen and we want to reduce a, to a full oxygen molecule, you can imagine it's going to take double that, so four electrons. In fact, if we wanted to write this um, in terms of just one oxygen molecule instead of a half, it would be oxygen plus four protons goes to two waters. Okay, And so that means it's going to take four electrons to totally reduce molecular oxygen to water. Okay, Four electrons. So that means because cytochrome C can only deliver one electron at a time, it's going to take four cytochrome Cs ultimately to do that. Okay. Another important thing about cytochrome C oxidase is it pumps two protons from the matrix down here into the intermembrane space. So remember complex one pumped four, complex three pumped four, this one pumps two, and then complex two doesn't pump any. Okay. One other kind of interesting thing about this enzyme is particularly the copper B down here is strongly inhibited by certain uh, Lewis bases or nucleophiles, which include cyanide, azide, and carbon monoxide especially. Um, you've probably heard stories or seen things on TV and different TV shows in which somebody tries to commit suicide, and the way they do it is they close the garage door with their car in it, open the windows to the car, and they turn the car on, and the car is releasing a lot of carbon monoxide Normally, when you have your car outside, I mean, your, your, the volume of your, um, the environment that you're in, you're in is enormous. I mean, it's just open to the world, so the carbon monoxide just sort of diffuses away, and its concentration is negligible. But when you close the garage door, the concentration of CO is so high that it, that, that concentration gets into your blood, and carbon monoxide inhibits this binuclear complex and ultimately inhibits the conversion of oxygen to water. Um, oxygen is referred to as the final electron acceptor. You've probably heard that since general biology. In terms of the mitochondrial respiratory chain, oxygen is the final electron acceptor. Okay? In fact, oxygen, it's really, it really its main function in, in these organisms that have mitochondria is to actually take those electrons. Okay? It really has not, other than a few reactions of like monooxygenases and things that add hydroxyl groups, this is its main function. It's just to take electrons and produce a waste product, water. Now, why is that important? Well, I'm going to tell you something that's very, very important that you need to understand. If I take any of these four complexes, one, two, three, and four, and I somehow, whether it's in inhibition by a poison or whatever, if I inhibit or stop the action of any one of these four proteins, complexes, the entire respiratory chain shuts down. So in other words, if I inhibit complex four, the whole thing shuts down. 
If I inhibit complex three, the whole thing shuts down. If I inhibit complex two, complex one, again, the whole thing shuts down. The, the entire functionality of the respiratory chain is dependent on all of them working in tandem with each other. Okay? So if I somehow inhibit complex four, somehow, the whole thing shuts down. So one way to inhibit complex four is to deprive it of oxygen. And that's actually something that happens under anaerobic conditions, maybe something like high intensity exercise, or if you're in a homeostatic imbalance, a heart attack caused by restriction of blood flow to myocardium. Okay, the point is, is that either by taking away the substrate for one of these enzymes or inhibiting it with a poison, the whole thing, the whole respiratory chain tends to shut down and proton pumping stops. And as we'll talk about in a few videos, proton pumping powers an enzyme called ATP synthase, so your ATP yield is going to go sharply down. Okay? So I just wanted to make that perfectly clear that you have to have all four of these complexes working in tandem. If you knock one of them out, they all die. Okay? Their activity all is dependent on the previous one and the one after it. Okay? Because it's an electron transport chain. If you stop one point in the chain, it clogs and backs up and nothing, nothing past the clog works, and nothing before it works because it's clogged, okay? So I just wanted to make that perfectly clear. Um, hopefully this made a little bit of sense about this enzyme. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.